Oh my gosh. Yeah. There we have it. Numbers don't lie. It's a big pipe. It doesn't want to go in. Hey guys, what is up? It's Biff and you're back for a very exciting episode of Fearless Mods where we're working on the 2019 Kia Stinger GTS and why is this one so exciting? Because we're doing our very first modification. I know I said that I'm going to LS swap this thing eventually, but if you remember I also said that I want to enjoy it while I'm working on that part of the build. And to more thoroughly enjoy it, I need to complement this K&N cold air intake with something a little bit better on the airflow performance side and that comes in the form of this you can't see Mishimoto intercooler so that we can get a good cold charge coming out the hot side of the pipe so let's go ahead and get into it and see what's in the box so the first thing I noticed with this is just how freaking heavy the thing is I'll be interested to see how this compares weight wise to the one we removed and there you have it. Holy smokes, this thing is a monster. It is a monster. It's got thickness, girth, height, and amazing cooling power. First, I just want to thank Mishimoto for helping us out with this build. Man, that thing is so light. I thought that I was dealing with plastic. It's just super light aluminum. And here we have perhaps the second most exciting thing about this mod, and that is updated charge pipe, if you will, because I think this alone right here is going to result in a ton of performance gain over the one that we're going to remove, and we'll get another look at that as we do the job. And there it is with all the fixings. Everything you need to complete the job, all brought to you by Mishi. Okay, there's a really good video on Mishi's website that walks you through how to do this job. So we're not gonna recreate the how-to um, down to the minute detail that they do, but uh, we will walk you through a step-by-step -step, uh, along the way. And it's gonna start with removing a lot of this stuff that we just put back on here. So these inlets, this uh, air scoop, and of course, the intercooler, so that we can get in here and replace it with the new hardware. We got the air dam out, and the two inlets right here, just a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts and undo some wires. Now we're taking off the top mounts for the uh, intercooler, but before I do that, while I have something to press against, I'm gonna go ahead and get these uh, tubes disconnected here, so I'll get a screwdriver in here and pull back this retainer clip and allow myself to pull these tubes off of both sides. This side has a clamp uh, and then we'll be ready to uh, go ahead and unbolt the intercooler and pull it out before we get into all of this up here. Oh yeah, this one's so light compared to that one. I'm adding weight to the car with this and that's normally not something you do. So let's see what we got here weight wise because I'm telling you what there's a huge difference here coming off of these. Here's the one that came off and we still have plastic stuff on here and that that looks like 11 pounds right there. Uh, this one's not going to be 11 pounds. Ugh. Hopefully it's less than 50. <laughs> oh 32 pounds. So we went from 11 to 32. That's 21 more pounds by my math. All right, so now that we've got the intercooler off, um, next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and start pulling apart some of this uh, up here so we can reveal the air splitter, if you will, that uh, it's the hot air splitter that comes off the turbos that we're replacing. So we'll go ahead and start pulling this apart. One thing I will point out is anywhere there's a clamp, a hose like this, you just pull the cap off of it, and then it's a normal 5 16 head here to uh, loosen up the hose clamp. We 
We just had this one out the other day, so not too much trouble getting that out. MAF, uh, the other little uh, blow off valve sensor here, and this uh, vent tube. Pull those off, move them out of the way, and pipe comes out. Now we'll go ahead and take off these clamps here and the four bolts on each blow off valve so that we can move those out of the way. Off the strut braces, we'll leave them on for now because these cold side intakes are going to stay there. So let's see if we can get in here and get enough of this without pulling those off for now. Probably don't even need to take these clamps off, so we'll just leave them and see if we can just pull these out of the way. And there we go. That's clear. So let's go ahead and see now if we can start pulling off some of these uh, tubes that go to the, the hot side of the turbo. Again, we'll have to pull the caps off of them and then use a 5 16 to unscrew them on both sides. And the bottom one is still on the pipe, so I'm just gonna try to remove this and see if we can then just drop that out or pull it up. We're gonna go ahead and take this off now because I want to be able to compare these two and just look at the differences. So from a weight perspective, these aren't drastically as different as the intercoolers are from one another. But from a quality perspective and a size and airflow perspective, you can just, you can see the difference. And maybe it's best to see from the back. But this Mishi one, look at the way the airflow just smoothly comes up, goes around a radius and heads down into that huge charge pipe. This one here, you can see they come up kind of straight across, make a couple more bends, not quite as smooth. It's not a big deal, but not quite as smooth. And it comes down through that charge pipe. Now, look at these differences. They both have the split inside there, but this one dwarfs that one. If I line up the edges, you can see I've got about half to three quarters of an inch larger uh, diameter there. And when you talk in terms of circumference and area and airflow, that's huge. Not only that, check this out. It just dwarfs it and swallows it. Same thing, that one is just as much bigger as the main charge pipe is. And so you can see about a half to three quarters of an inch difference there. But again, when it comes to area, that's a whole lot more area for airflow to come down through these pipes. Less resistance, more airflow, bigger intercooler, and a cooler charge going into the engine, and that all equals more power. From here, we're just gonna go ahead and install this on the car now. Okay, that's on there nice. It's got a little bit of flex to it and put our blow off valves back on here. These have just got flat o-rings so I just want to make sure that the o-rings still look good and uh, not crimped or pinched or coming out of their grooves. I'll line those up and get the bolts started. And there we go, blow off valves are installed as is the charge pipe. All right, next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and put on these two tubes here took off the old ones and now we're just going to put the new ones on. As you can see they go from small to large and they are slightly different. Make sure you get the worm screws pointing the right way that you want so that you can have easy access to tighten them. There we go. Fits on nice like a glove. This one's going to be a little bit tighter to get it on. So if you can do this, might need to do it from underneath. ourselves a little more room to work here. Hoses are on, clamps are on loosely, pointing in the right directions. Let's tighten this back down and then tighten our hose clamps. We've got the uh, combiner pipe, whatever you want to call it, the cross tube that brings the two turbos in. We've got the hoses on there, we've got them clamped down. So the top end of this is done with the blow off valves and everything. Now it's time to go ahead and start with the hot side for the intercooler. We'll go ahead and get the down pipe for the turbo, for the hot side, the collector, below the collector. How about that? We're going to take where the collector is for the two turbos and start assembling the hose to the pipe that comes down here to the hot side. And then we'll go ahead and get the cold side up on here. And then we'll be able to go ahead and start putting on the intercooler itself.
We're gonna take some of this stuff out to give ourselves a little bit more room. Now that we've got this drop down in there, all I had to do was remove this and still had to kind of give it a little bit of persuasion to get down through that bottom hole down there. But now we're lined up for our bracket here. We can go ahead and get this hose in before we get everything tightened up. Well, we still got room to move. Tight clearance on the cold air, but I think we'll be good. And then somewhere over here, we've got our mass airflow sensor with a new seal. So we'll go ahead and get a pick and replace that. Okay, so the top side is looking pretty good. We just gotta get this pipe on. It looks to me like the short side of the bend is gonna come up here towards the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and at least get one of those clamps started. There are some tight clearances on this thing, but the long end up here works a lot better. Get it angled around both the radiator fan, the radiator reservoir, and the subframe uh, mount down underneath there so it can sneak its way around there and get set up for the intercooler. All right, two of them clamped down to left-hand tightening torque. We've got wiggle movement on both sides before it makes any contact with anything. Let's go ahead and put the brace back on so we can complete the work on the top side. All right guys, time to throw this weighty beast in the front of the car. I'm super excited. It's going to look fantastic. And without further ado, let's just jump into it. All right, so the first thing I'm doing is just throwing the rubber grommets from the old intercooler onto the new one. Lowers and uppers. The lower brackets are going to remain the same. They're already in. Okay, so you got two bags that come with it that have a little adjustment to your mounting holes so that you can make them flush. The old ones had a little bit of a curvature to the edge here that accounted for making them flush, but the new ones are just flat. So you have this little adapter that screws into your previous mounting hole. We'll tighten those up and then that gives you this flange to set against so that it's even with the other hole. And then you just screw on these other 12 millimeter bolts onto them or 10 millimeter for the little ones. One thing we'll have to do is bend this tab forward a little bit. I took out the sensor. Just to give it a little bit of clearance, a little bit more clearance. Bend that down, that'll help us hold it in place. Well, that's not good. Lesson number one, don't impact on the 10 millimeter bolt that goes and holds the bracket on because it twisted right off. So we're gonna be holding the top brackets on with three bolts instead of four. I think we'll be fine. And once we get those all bolted down, they, uh, they hold this thing nice and tight, so this is good to go. It's setting back down there flush. I'm gonna go ahead and put my sensor back in. So that's good to go. Now all we gotta do is go ahead and hook up our two pipes on the ends here, our rubber hoses on the ends here, and then we will be complete on this part of the job, and then we'll be on to modifying the grill to stick it back on. As always, make sure you put your hose clamps on first. Okay, and there we have the replacement Mishimoto front mount intercooler adding 21 pounds of weight to our vehicle, but also hopefully a portion of that in horsepower. One thing that I got to point out while I sit here taking a break before jumping back to it is just how much better the airflow is going to be on this Mishi. Not only is it fat, allowing a lot of flow, but it's also just smooth and the contour is beautiful. Just look at this. Big beefy fat line smoothly flowing from down underneath the collector up and around smoothly into 
an intercooler that is angled to accept the airflow with minimal resistance and then back out the other side and again smoothly up into there with a nice curvature no kinks no bends everything is just huge and smooth flow all the way through and I can't wait to go ahead and finish it up so let's go ahead and get this grill done this is in the video that Mishy provides so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on how to cut it I'm going to follow the video myself I'm just going to tape it out cut it and then go ahead and install it so enjoy some fast motion video while I complete this job And of course the first issue is this big old plug that has to come down through here and it doesn't fit anywhere even if I take it off the bracket. Alright guys, and there you have it. We have got our Mishimoto intercooler installed on this car and it looks absolutely amazing. I am super happy with how this turned out. I am thankful that Mishimoto stepped up and helped us out with this. I've got some work to do here for cleanup. Um, this will be on eBay if anybody wants it. It'll come to you in a nice neat Mishimoto box. And if this is reminding me of anything, it's that I need to clean up this shop. But that's going to be a wrap for this video. I sure hope that you've enjoyed watching it. I hope that you enjoyed the Mishimoto install. Please remember to check out their website for the detailed install instructions. But hopefully this showed you that it can be done fairly simply without having to remove a whole lot from the car. Granted, I already had the bumper off and that made things a little more simple. The addition of 21 pounds of weight to the front of this car, but it's, it's very forward and it's very low. So good for the CG if you gotta add weight, and who cares, because we're adding a lot of power. Next steps will be some body work to get us closer to finalizing this paint job, and then we're gonna just be buttoning it up and, and be ready to go. So, hey guys, sure appreciate you coming watching the channel. If you like Fearless Mods, if you like this kind of content where you can come in and do your own performance mods to your Kia Stinger or any other build, then go ahead and click like and subscribe. Click the bell so you get a reminder and a notification for when we post content. And thank you for coming here and watching us. We'll catch you again real soon. Take care.